What if the world's most sanctioned tech company is secretly building the future of AI without NVIDIA? Huawei has built their own chips, their own systems, and they're not slowing down. Is this China's big AI comeback, or something even bigger? Let's break it down. Chapter 1. Chip vs. Chip Huawei, a major Chinese tech giant based in Shenzhen, is best known for its 5G gear and smartphones, once even outselling Apple in some markets. On the other side, NVIDIA is the go-to name for AI chips, used by companies like Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, and even OpenAI. Now Huawei is entering the AI chip game in a big way. With its new chip, the Ascend 910C, Huawei isn't just trying to catch up, it's challenging NVIDIA directly. It's going head-to-head -head with some of the most powerful chips on the market, including NVIDIA's China-compliant H20 and the cutting-edge GB200 used outside of Chinese borders. While the GB200 still holds the global performance crown, the Ascend 910C has redefined what's possible within the Chinese market. The numbers speak volumes. The Ascend 910C boasts 800 teraflops of computing power using 16-bit precision, which places it four times ahead of the H20 in raw capability. That kind of muscle makes it the most powerful AI chip legally available in China today. However, it still trails behind the GB200, which remains three times more powerful overall, an edge that keeps Nvidia in the lead for now, at least outside China. Built with 7 nanometer technology and leveraging a dual die architecture, the 910C mirrors design strategies used by NVIDIA's own Blackwell series. Each die comes equipped with four high-speed memory modules, ensuring fast data movement and high computational efficiency. For a company once known primarily for smartphones, Huawei's leap into advanced chip making signals a dramatic evolution. With the Ascend 910C, Huawei has proven it can not only compete in the AI hardware race but also lead, at least on its home turf. But what does Huawei do with these chips? They don't just sell them, they build super systems with them. Chapter 2 the supercomputer. Their most exciting creation so far is a supercomputer called Cloud Matrix 384. As the name suggests, it uses 384 of Huawei's new Ascend 910C chips all working together in one system. That's a huge number of chips packed into one machine. To understand how big that is, it helps to look at what the competition is doing. NVIDIA's top supercomputer system, the MVL72, uses only 72 GPUs. So, Huawei's Cloud Matrix has more than five times the number of chips, and it shows in the performance. NVIDIA's system can handle 180 petaflops of computing power. Huawei's system goes even further, reaching 300 petaflops. That means it can process an enormous amount of data very fast, almost double what NVIDIA's system can do. At first glance, it looks like Huawei has taken the lead. More chips and more computing power make the Cloud Matrix 384 look like a winner. But the full picture is more complicated. Packing so many chips into one machine isn't easy or cheap. The extra performance comes with a very high cost. That includes not just money, but power usage, cooling needs, and the complexity of keeping everything running smoothly. So, while Huawei has created something incredibly powerful, it also faces big challenges. Bigger doesn't always mean better, at least not without trade-offs. Chapter 3. Power Problems this supercomputer guzzles 600 kilowatts of power just to stay running. Compare that to NVIDIA's NVL72, which uses only 145 kilowatts. That means Huawei's machine burns through over four times the electricity for the same task. Why such a big difference? The truth is, Huawei's chips just aren't as energy efficient. They get the job done, but they work harder and eat more power doing it. Another reason? Huawei connects their GPUs in a totally different way. Instead of using copper cables like NVIDIA, Huawei relies on optical networking, and that changes everything. Chapter 4. Optical versus Copper When it comes to linking up GPUs, NVIDIA plays it smart and simple. They use copper cables, lots of them. In fact, one NVL72 has about 1,500 copper connections. It's cost-effective, easier to manage, and way more power-efficient. Huawei, however, takes a different route. They connect their chips with optical transceivers. This makes their system faster and capable of moving more data at once, which is great for training massive AI models. But there's a downside. More heat, more power, and more complexity. It's a trade-off between speed and simplicity. In the end, Huawei's approach is bold, but not exactly efficient. Even with these major weaknesses, can Huawei still take the lead? 
obviously yes. Chapter 5. China's Hidden Advantage You'd think a machine as power-hungry as Huawei's cloud matrix would be a major problem, right? But in China, it's not. While Western countries race to make data centers more energy efficient, China plays by a different rulebook. Energy efficiency isn't the top concern there. China's power grid still leans heavily on coal and oil, making up around half of its energy supply. But it's not stuck in the past. Solar farms, wind turbines, nuclear plants, and hydroelectric dams are rising fast. The result? Power is both cheap and increasingly abundant. In this environment, Huawei doesn't need to worry about burning four times more energy than NVIDIA. They can run high-powered, less efficient systems without facing the same pressure to cut consumption. For China, the priority is performance and AI dominance, not trimming kilowatts. So, while Cloud Matrix might look like a power-guzzling monster to a Silicon Valley engineer, it fits perfectly into China's strategy. In tech zones across the country, what matters most is output, not energy labels. And that's where Huawei quietly wins. So, while Huawei's Cloud Matrix might seem wasteful in California, it fits just fine in China's power-rich tech zones. So, with contrast advantages, who really wins this battle? Chapter 6. Who's really winning? Let's zoom out and compare systems, not just chips. When it comes to raw GPU power, NVIDIA's GB200 still leads the pack. It's the gold standard in AI performance. But here's where things get interesting. When you step back and compare entire systems, Huawei's Cloud Matrix has a surprising edge, especially against NVIDIA's H20 clusters, which are the only ones currently allowed in China. In that context, Cloud Matrix isn't just a good alternative, it's the best one available in China. It gives developers and companies access to high-performance AI training without needing to rely on restricted Western chips. But Huawei's strategy isn't just about catching up, it's about building something different, something homegrown, and possibly something more tailored to China's specific needs. They've essentially created a whole system that can stand on its own, free from the supply chain and political headaches that come with United States tech. That's a strategic win, not just a technical one. But powerful hardware isn't enough, you need software that can actually make use of all that speed and complexity. Think Huawei might have slipped up here? Not a chance. They know exactly what they're doing. Chapter 7. Huawei's Secret Software Weapon Huawei has created just that with its CANN software stack. It works like NVIDIA's CUDA, which is the software that helps their chips run AI tasks smoothly. CAN is made just for Huawei's chips and helps manage all the heavy work, like dividing tasks between GPUs, speeding up AI processing, and making sure all parts of the system talk to each other without crashing. Without CAN, the massive cloud matrix system wouldn't work well, but with it, everything runs faster and more efficiently, even if the hardware isn't as advanced as NVIDIA's. What's even smarter is that CAN lets Chinese developers convert their old NVIDIA code into Huawei's system, so they don't have to start over or waste time rewriting everything. That makes switching from NVIDIA to Huawei much easier and faster. This proves that Huawei's AI approach isn't about building one great chip, it's about controlling the entire AI ecosystem from the ground up. Chapter 8. A chip built for China. They're designing their own chips, running their own software, powering their own data centers with China's domestic energy sources, and now even starting to shift manufacturing inside national borders. What used to be produced by Taiwan's TSMC is now moving to China's own SMIC using a 7 nanometer N plus 2 process. Bit by bit, Huawei is cutting ties with foreign suppliers and replacing them with homegrown alternatives. This isn't just technical evolution, it's strategic independence. While the United States hoped that export bans and sanctions would slow Huawei down, the result has been the opposite. The pressure seems to have accelerated Huawei's determination. They aren't aiming to win a global race with NVIDIA, they're focused on building an AI foundation that's fully Chinese, even if that means using more power or spending more money. Efficiency is secondary, control is everything, and the results are starting to show. DeepSeek, one of China's leading AI labs, is now using Huawei's 910C for inference tasks, even though its models were originally trained on NVIDIA chips. That kind of compatibility and performance says a lot. The distance between Huawei and the West's AI leaders is shrinking and fast. Whether the rest of the world is ready for it is another question entirely. Chapter 9. The impossible is starting to look possible. Not long ago, no one thought any company could catch up to NVIDIA, but Huawei is showing there's a different path to lead. 
Instead of racing to make one extremely fast chip, they are stacking many chips together to boost power. They use more energy instead of focusing on saving it. They are building everything from the chip design to software and data centers themselves, cutting reliance on foreign technology. Even NVIDIA's CEO recognizes this shift. In a Bloomberg interview following their latest business results, he called Huawei a formidable technology company that is looking for ways to compete. What started as a forced response to sanctions has turned into a serious shift in the AI world. While many Western companies face challenges like supply chain problems and chip shortages, Huawei is pushing forward quickly. Their goal is not just to compete, but to dominate on their own terms. Systems like Huawei's Cloud Matrix are still developing, but they're improving fast. New, more powerful chips like the Ascend 910D and 920 are already in the works. If Huawei succeeds, it won't just close the gap, it will redraw the map. The global AI balance, once firmly in NVIDIA's hands, could shift east. So, the question is no longer, can they catch up? It's far more serious what happens when they do. Let's wait and see.